I'm Ian Somerville and in this video I'm going to introduce the engineering techniques that we use for the development of critical systems and briefly discuss some of the issues that influence the, the choice of engineering techniques and technology that we use in critical systems engineering. I'll be following this up with other videos that look at some of these techniques in more detail. Let me start by reminding you about critical systems. Critical systems are systems whose failure can cause injury or loss of life, are very serious economic consequences for the businesses running these systems. They're normally long lifetime systems, that is we introduce and deploy these systems and they're used for many, many years. It's now the case that virtually all public and private sector activities are reliant on some form of critical system, be it in the generation of power, the transmission of gas and electricity, or in the running of websites which are critical for businesses survival. This is an example of a, of a critical system. This is a, an air traffic control system which is used to manage the en route air traffic control covering the whole of the UK. This system probably has a lifetime of 15 to 20 years and it's safety critical. Failure could lead to air accidents. When we're thinking about critical systems engineering, that is the, the building of critical systems, we have to focus on tools, techniques and technologies that lead to dependability. Dependability, availability, security, safety and, and reliability is a topic I've covered in other videos. There are two things that distinguish critical systems engineering from other types of system engineering, say the building of, uh, of business software to do things like customer relationship management. One is the fact that the costs of failure of critical systems can be incredibly high. Failure has to be avoided if at all possible and consequently we can use development techniques for critical systems engineering that are not cost effective for other classes of systems and software development. The other important difference is that for critical systems it may be necessary to have the system certified as compliant with laws and regulations or if not certified you may have to demonstrate to a, a regulator, an external regulator that the system follows the, the laws and the regulations set out by the, the government and the regulator. Regulators are government bodies whose job is to ensure that safety and security standards are upheld and that companies and any other organisation behave in such a way that is conformant to national and international laws. This involves a degree of interpretation of these laws and the establishment of rules and regulations which govern and which regulate the activities in a particular area. And the regulator has to ensure that all of the companies working in that area follow those rules and regulations. Here are some examples of regulators in the UK. The Bank of England is responsible for some financial regulation. The Office for Nuclear Regulation is concerned with systems used in the nuclear industry. And the Office for Rail Regulation with systems used in the rail industry. The Civil Aviation Authority is responsible for both onboard and ground aviation systems such as air traffic control systems and the Information Commissioner's Office is responsible for ensuring that companies conform to the secure and legal management of data, personal data, as set out in the Data Protection Act. In some cases, systems cannot just be put into use, deployed by the owner of these systems, but before they're put in, into use, the regulator has to certify these systems that they are in fact safe and they do not threaten the general public. Examples of systems which have to be certified are aviation systems, nuclear systems, 
railway systems and some kinds of medical system, not actually all medical systems. Achieving certification is a very expensive process, also quite time consuming, and certification costs can sometimes exceed the development costs of a complex software system. The certification process involves regulators checking that the system has been developed in accordance with the current standards and rules and regulations and that it is safe to be deployed. This usually involves the developers and the owners of the system jointly creating what's called a safety or a dependability case which is a body of evidence that when considered together can provide positive confirmation that the system will be safe in use. Of course, this is a judgment. We cannot ever make things completely safe, but the job of the regulator is to ensure that a system is as safe as it possibly can be. Some systems don't need to be certified before they're into use. But the owners of the systems have an obligation to demonstrate compliance with laws and regulations. And this often means much the same as getting a system certified. It's important to collect data about the system development and operation and to have that data available if required by the regulator. An important difference then between critical systems engineering and other classes of software engineering is that it's not just a relationship between a system customer or system owner and a system developer. The other stakeholder, the other important stakeholder in the process is the regulator who can both influence the way in which development proceeds and who has the ability to actually ensure that a system is not deployed. So what does all this mean for critical systems engineering? Well, the fact that failure costs are high means that it's possible to use techniques and technologies that may not be cost effective for other systems. And we'll see an example of this shortly. The long lifetime of these systems means that a good deal of attention has to be paid to system documentation because the project team developing the system will not be the project team maintaining the system in say 10 or 15 years time. And there's a need for very detailed product and process record keeping. The process and product records are part of the information that is provided to the regulator and they are used to convince the regulator that a due process has been followed in the system development. Because of the need for documentation and a, a very detailed analysis of the system specification, it's usually the case that critical systems are developed using a plan-driven rather than an agile process. As part of that, it's essential to have a description of the system requirements and more detailed specification that is as complete as possible. It should say everything that we intend to have in the delivered system. And very disciplined configuration management is essential to ensure that we can always find the relevant version of all documents and that in fact we build the delivered system, the system that is certified, in a way which is replicable so we can always repeat that system build and deliver the same system. If you watched my other videos on system dependability you'll know that the key techniques that we use to achieve dependability are fault avoidance, fault detection and removal, fault tolerance and failure recovery. To back these up we may use some specialized software engineering techniques such as the use of formal methods where we express uh, a system specification mathematically and carry out various analysis and refinements of that specification. We may use static analyzers and model checkers that can actually detect problems in a program which may not be easily detectable using system testing. NASA are an example of an organization that have used formal methods in the development of 
a number of spacecraft systems. We may use fault tolerant architectures, which is a ways of organising the system so that it can tolerate faults that may occur. I'll cover these in a separate video. And we may use techniques such as safety case management, which allows us to marshal the evidence for a regulator about the safety of a system. This is an example of a, a safety case editor developed by a company called Adelard, which allows the checking of systems and the safety case against the appropriate standards. Critical Systems Engineering focuses on the tools, techniques and technologies for developing reliable and secure systems. The Critical Systems Engineering process may have to collect and collate information that's used by a regulator in the certification of the system. Normally, a plan-based process is used for critical systems engineering rather than an agile process. <clears throat> Tools, techniques and technologies that are not cost effective for other types of software en engineering may be used and may be effective for critical systems engineering. You can download the slides that accompany this video from my SlideShare account.